complex roots are weird. If we take all the complex numbers that make this pentagon, then cube them, we get this flower. And if we go backwards by taking the cube root of the flower, we get that pentagon, and this pentagon, and this pentagon. There's three of them. The same thing happens with a square. Cubed, we get a flower, and the cube root of that is three squares. What about a triangle? Cubed, we get this teardrop, and the cube root of that is just one triangle. Things work nicely in this case. So what makes the triangle different? Do you have a guess? The triangle has three points, and we're taking the third power and root. If we instead took the fourth power and root, we'd get just one square and four copies of the other shapes. Something similar happens with the fifth power and root. In this video, we'll look at the math behind this, we'll learn how to calculate complex roots, and explore some more fun ways to visualize them. These multiple shapes show up because numbers have multiple roots. Every number has two square roots. That's why we write this plus and minus sign. But also, every number has three cube roots and four fourth roots. And this continues. In general, every number has n nth roots. And we can understand this better if we visualize. Here are the cube roots of i. They make an equilateral triangle. And here are the fourth roots of 3 minus 2i. They make a square. And the sixth roots of negative 4 make a regular hexagon. And this also works in general. Every number has n nth roots, and those nth roots form a regular n-gon. And there's a beautiful reason why this happens. Let's go back to the sixth roots of negative 4. What if there were only one sixth root? Mathematicians like to use Greek letters for complex numbers, so let's call it z. z is the sixth root of negative 4, so z to the sixth equals negative 4. What if we rotate z by 60 degrees? We'll call this rz, r for rotation. rz is also a sixth root. If we raise it to the sixth power, then distribute the exponent, we know that z to the sixth is negative 4. What about r to the sixth? Well, that just means rotate by 60 degrees six times, which ends up being 360 degrees. This takes us right back to where we started. So this r to the sixth cancels out, and we're left with just negative 4. So yes, rz is a sixth root of negative 4. If we take it to the sixth power, we get negative 4. And if we rotate again, we get r squared z. This is also a sixth root, since r to the twelfth is a 720 degree rotation, which also cancels out. And the same goes for r cubed z, r to the fourth z, and r to the fifth z. All of these roots are just rotated versions of each other. And this explains what happened at the start of the video. The cube root of a pentagon cubed is three pentagons. These three pentagons are rotated versions of each other, one by 120 degrees and one by 240 degrees. When we cube, those rotations cancel out. The same thing happened with the square. The cube root results in rotated copies of the same square. And it didn't happen with the triangle, because if we rotate a triangle by 120 degrees, it just looks the exact same. Okay, that resolves everything about complex roots. No more confusion. Thanks for watching. Wait, can we rewind a bit? Are we allowed to distribute an exponent like this? This is a weird mix of rotations and numbers. Yeah, we can, because rotations are numbers. No, rotations are numbers. Any rotation can be represented as a complex number. A great example of this is the 90 degree rotation represented by i. To see how this works, let's begin with 4 plus i. If we multiply by i, we get negative 1 plus 4i, which is 90 degrees from where we started. 
multiplying again rotates further by 90 degrees, and then again, and then we get back to the start. So I is a 90 degree rotation, and this is easier to understand if we change our perspective. We often think of complex numbers using a grid. Each number has a real and imaginary coordinate. This number is 4 comma 3. This grid is great for adding. To add up some numbers, we just add their real parts and then their imaginary parts separately. But multiplication is annoying. It's easier to multiply if we use polar coordinates, where every number has a radius and an angle. Instead of negative 4 comma 3, this has radius 5 and angle 143 degrees. To multiply numbers, we multiply the radii together and then add the angles together. So let's see how this works with I. I has radius 1 and angle 90 degrees. So if we multiply some number by I, the radius doesn't change and the angle gets 90 degrees added to it. Multiplying by i is the same as rotating by 90 degrees. And we can similarly create a number for any angle a. We just take the number 1 comma a degrees. So in this example from earlier, where r was a 60 degree rotation, r is just the number 1 comma 60 degrees. And we were using 60 degrees because it's 360 over 6. And here we're looking for sixth roots. In the general case of nth roots, we'll want to use the rotation 360 over n, because this cancels out after n repetitions. So if we have some nth root z, we can rotate z by that r to get new nth roots of z. If we continue, we'll end up with a regular n-gon. So now we have a pretty good intuition about these nth roots on an n-gon. But this rests on the assumption that w has an nth root z to begin with. If there is an nth root, we can rotate it to get more. But how do we know that there is at least one root? Well, the fundamental theorem of algebra tells us that every polynomial has a root. And since this is a polynomial, it has a root. So yeah, there is a root. But this answer is not very satisfying unless you already understand the fundamental theorem of algebra, and I don't want to walk through that now. So instead of this theoretical argument, let's calculate the nth root of w. Let's say we have the number w, and we have it in the real and imaginary coordinates. But it's a lot easier to work with roots in the polar coordinates, so we'll want to convert them. We'll want to find the radius and angle of w. Let's start with the radius. That's the distance from w to the origin. We have the horizontal real distance and the vertical imaginary distance, so we can just use the Pythagorean theorem to get the radius. What about the angle? Well, the tangent of the angle is opposite over adjacent, or imaginary over real. So we can just take the inverse tangent of imaginary over real to get the angle. So now we have a radius and angle for w, Let's find the radius and angle for its root, z. So using the rules from polar coordinates, we multiply the radii and add the angles. z's radius to the n should be w's radius. We have to solve another root problem. But actually, the radius is always a real number, so we can just take the real nth root. The angle is easier. We just get the angle of z as the angle of w over n. Great, now we have the radius and angle for z. But maybe we want to convert back into real and imaginary. We can split the angle into its sine and cosine, and then scale by multiplying by the radius. And there we go. That is how you calculate a complex root. Now, to apply this calculation, let's create a simple interactive program using P5JS. To start, we'll set up the window and draw a background. By default, the origin is in the upper left, so we should translate that to the middle. And the default unit is one pixel, so we should scale that to a fourth of the height. Now we can draw rectangles for axes and a unit circle. Next, to make this interactive, let's find the number that the mouse is at. We find the distance between the mouse and the origin, 
and then divide by that scalar to convert away from pixels. Now let's draw a circle at the mouse position. Nice. Now let's convert the mouse's position into polar coordinates, and then we calculate the radius and angle for the root, then convert the root back into real and imaginary, and then draw a circle at the root. Nice. We now have a program that calculates any nth root, but it would be nice to show all of the roots, not just one. So let's make a loop to run n times, each time we rotate by 360 over n. Great, we're done. This code is available on Open Processing, which is linked below. You can open the code and try changing things around yourself. You could try taking numbers with a fractional power. If we use the 16 over 15th power, there are still 15 roots, but the radius is about the same as the input. But the 18 over 15th power only gives us 5 roots, since this fraction can be simplified. You could also try taking multiple input points, like with a shape. Here is the square root of this star, and the third root, and the fourth. I really like viewing this using a grid, colored based on the angle. So here is the square root of the grid. You can see each color now has two copies. And there are three copies in the cube root, four copies in the fourth root, and so on. Here we also see those numbers compress towards the unit circle. So go check it out. Have fun writing some code, and thanks for watching.